All right. I, I think we're here, Maria. Hey. All right. Good one morning, more time. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> How are How you? How you doing? Good, 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 good. What, what are you drinking there? Oh, thanks for asking. Uh, this is uh, Papua New Guinea. Um, from it's a it's a washed Papua New Guinea from a roaster here that's you know just down the street. I'm super lucky. Uh, super tasty. Um, I'd say, you know, kind of cocoa nibs and lemon. You know, my palate isn't like, the most refined. I, I'm really good at fixing espresso machines. I, I try to you know make sure I have the right adjectives, you know, right. and use ones now and then so that as I'm 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 drinking I can I can expand on that. But you know. <laughs> Uh, definitely uh, something I, I could use practice on. What about you? Cool. I've got, um, I have got a natural, uh, actually take that back, a washed Ethiopian from George Howell. Nice. Yeah. And guess what I, guess what I brewed it on? What? My super clean Bonavita, right? We can't well, have a situation shiny. where the cobbler's children have no shoes. Super clean, doesn't smell, it's all good. They're way better than me. I've got a couple of broken espresso machines in the garage. So, uh, you know, maybe one day they'll make me some coffee again. <laughs> right on. All right, well, well cool. Well, hey, you know, this will be a fun fun chat today. Hopefully um, we, we'll get some great questions, but let's hop to it, right? Yeah, so um, welcome everyone uh, to the Ask the CTG expert episode 11, Essentials of Equipment Care. Uh, again, my name is Caleb Leach, uh, and I'll be your moderator today. And we're going to be meeting with Maria Cleveland from Ernex. Uh, yeah, showing off her uh, super clean urns already. Um, we will discuss some basics of equipment care and cleaning through the lens of beverage quality, food safety, and equipment reliability. And I have to say, Maria, you're really the guru in this in this space, you know, for our industry. And I'm so excited uh, to learn some new tips and tricks. Uh, so expect everyone should expect to, to kind of get some really amazing pro tips out of this, a little bit of chemistry, and some valuable insights on how to incorporate cleaning into everyday sales. Um, at the end, we'll leave about 20 minutes. So uh, we'll, we'll do Q&A, um, but feel free to add questions like as we go. So, you know, don't wait till the end, go ahead and throw them in because I'm gonna keep logging them. And then once we get to that point, we can start um, answering the, the questions. We're gonna also provide the attendees with uh, contact info at the end. And um, if you have any questions or comments that don't get answered, believe me, we'll get back to you. Um, I'm gonna give Highland's email so you can just direct them all to him. I'm just kidding, we'll, we'll probably do this as a group, but um, the, the presentation also will be available. So this uh, wonderful presentation that Maria made, it's gonna be available for all the attendees to, to get. And I really, rec I, I encourage everyone uh, to, in to take this and incorporate it into your ongoing training uh, resources. This is, this is an amazing opportunity, a gift from Ernex and the Guild. Uh, uh, I know also wanted to promote uh, Ask the Expert Pro Series. So that's coming up in February. Um, so these, these ask, ask the Experts are, are really open to the public. They're for everyone. We want to make sure we give back uh, to anyone that we can. But we also wanted to add an extra level for our members. And with doing that, we're going to dive into some really uh, deep detail on technical topics. Uh, our, the first of the series is going to be on capacitors like how does that work um if you're interested in joining uh, keep an eye on slack for updates and then we're going to have more to come there uh, but it's really exciting time so we will continue to do these public ask the experts but we're also going to do a pro series so big announcement today uh everybody that came super lucky to hear that and um with that uh you know maria i, I think it'd be great if you could just do a little intro give everybody a little background and then we can sort of dive into the material. What do you think? Sure, sounds great, sounds great. So yeah, thanks for having me today. Um, so my name is Maria Cleveland. I've been in the specialty coffee industry or just general coffee industry and food service my entire career. I actually studied hotel restaurant management in, in, in college. And um, in, in the early 90s, um, was with Starbucks for many years in retail operations. I've worked for Pete's Coffee and Tea, scaling up 
licensing and retail ops. Um, and then um, we're for Equator and a smaller roaster servicing just the, the tippy top of, of, you know, quality chefs and the like. And um, they're very, very particular, right? Yeah. So um, that parlayed into a great role that I've had now with four, for four years with, with Ernex as um, director of sales here in North America now. And one of the things that I love the most is that I support every channel of the business, be it um, a convenience store, hotel uh, company, roaster, equipment manufacturers. We do a lot of um, equipment uh, cleaning development with manufacturers as well. So I consider that I am a consultant for you and your customers and, um, and anything that I can do to promote amazing coffee in the cup um, through the care of equipment that that's my role. So, so let's, let's dive into things here a little bit. Okay. So, so awesome. what, what are the, what, what were you saying there, buddy? I said, let's do it. That's awesome. Thanks, Maria. <laughs> let's do it. All right. All right. So what are the, basically, the, you know, what it all boils down to is quality in the cup and keeping your equipment running for sure. Um, let's face it. What, what is that photograph there? Um, that's a screen in a, you know, an espresso machine. Um, and it, it's a affects beverage quality for, if we're not keeping, um, the screens, the brew baskets, the servers, air pots, um, clean, you're going to get that coffee oil buildup, which really, it, it will go rancid. Um, you know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go into an account and I'll pull out the brew basket. And if it's, and if it's dirty, you know, you smell it, you know, and, and I would encourage you to, to, you know, have your accounts like smell that brew basket that's that's dirty smell that server that's clean you you know it comes through in the cup secondarily food food safety um, so many of our espresso machines are now super automatics with one step um, with the milk inside and if those aren't cleaned um, you're gonna have that bacterial growth that not only is gonna make the beverage taste horrible but also have a potential for foodborne illness so that's not great um, and then additionally, you know, the, the equipment, you know, could go down because of not cleaning, particularly, as I mentioned, lots of things with uh, super automatic espresso um, equipment. Um, one of our friends in Slack posted a, um, a three-way valve on an espresso machine that had so much coffee in it, he had to take a, um, a drill bit to get it out. So, and it, and it cost, I think it would have you know, been a rebuild of $500, but all told it was $1,500 to, to rebuild that machine. So, um, and yeah, so be a pro, know your stuff, know, know the equipment. So there's four essential factors to, you know, efficiently cleaning um, equipment or, or anything for that, that matter. And just like there's essentials of, of brewing coffee, um, proportion, grind, turbulence, all those different things that you would learn in a brewing fundamentals class, there are definitely those four fundamentals of efficient cleaning. Okay, so the first is temperature, okay? The hotter the water, the faster the cleaning will be. And so that is why we always recommend when possible using the hot water off of the coffee brewer, the, um, the hot water from the espresso machine, um, that will, will speed things up. The second is being time, how long you want to have the um, cleaning solution come in contact with the surface, okay? Um, agitation or scrubbing, um, you know, uh, if, if you think about it, say you, you, you've had, you know, eggs for breakfast and you let that, or the uh, egg residue stick to the fork, um, you're going to have to let it soak quite a while and scrub it quite a bit if you've let it dry on to the surface. Same thing goes with those coffee oils. Um, and then the formula, the solution factor, the, um, the strength of the formula, right? So the, those all four things work together. Um, so one tip that I'll have for you as technicians, you know, if you see a really soiled piece of equipment, I would recommend so you're not there extra time to double up that form factor, double up that uh, that solution, um, double strength the formula on really soiled equipment. You see a picture of Kafiza up here because um, I find that, that uh, a lot of techs just nuke everything with Kafiza, right? You know, um, and the one thing of of that foamy nature 
of our espresso machine cleaners is though that is required to get up to the three-way valve to cling to the three-way valve um, so that you then can can get those oils off whereas with um with coffee brewers or coffee servers um, that doesn't really require that foamy nature um, so you see that we have have different form factors. Um, we've got we've got of course powders, right? Good old fashioned, you know, it's been around since uh, the uh, early days of Burnex in the 1930s. Um, and then also we'll brew through packets. Um, tablets are fantastic for um, for portion control and also liquids. Um, you'd be surprised there there was an operator, pretty large scale operator that was uh, up until maybe two years ago, was trying to back flush their espresso equipment with a liquid. If you think about it, that liquid goes into solution immediately. So it's, it's not you know, clinging to the brew basket. It, it's not you know, getting to the three-way valve. So it's important to use the right form factor, okay? Um, and then also capsules. We do actually have um, uh, capsules for single cup brewers and, um, and espresso machines as well. So. Um, so let's face it, nobody likes to, what is, what's going on there? Lots of scrubbing, you know, nobody likes to do that. Okay. Um, and so the, the important thing is frequency of cleaning. The, the more frequently that, that the operator is cleaning, the, the less that they're going to need to loosen off of the surface. You see here in the bottom left-hand corner, it's as dark as night inside of that server. So I imagine that's gone a couple weeks, a month, maybe maybe even longer. And so therefore, they're gonna have to use quite a bit of, of um, cleaning solution and, and get in there and scrub. And the, the nature of, of food service, particularly um, you know, uh, when folks have so much to do, um, it's so much easier um, if they're cleaning, cleaning often. One tip that I wanted to show folks is, okay, so we've got a brew basket here. If you're putting liquid in it, it's gonna, you know, into the brew basket and then into the server. That of course will clean, um, but, um, but the brew basket's not gonna get as, as clean. If you have a tablet that then you're putting into the server and it goes over the hole in the brew basket, you're gonna get some backup into the brew basket, helping the cleaning efficacy of the brew basket as well. Or if pot potentially they're using powder and you wanna clean the basket and then the server underneath, a great tip is to put a coffee filter and then the powder so that you are slowing down the flow of the solution and you're, you're getting um, some of that cleaning efficacy of the brew basket. Um, what's going on in the right-hand corner here is is cleaning the the spray head, um, and um, we we've got a um, product called Cafe Sprays that is all plant-based and uses nanocolloidal technology. I don't really even know what that means, but but um, it's something that breaks down the oils. So um, another thing is that encouraging programs that are easy to execute. In, in my 25 years in the coffee industry, I have found that the easier it is for the barista, the server, the bartender, uh, let's face it, who hates making espresso drinks the most? It's bartenders. Um, you have to make it easy to execute um, or, or, it's, or it just gets blown off. Um, that was really, I think many years ago, why Ernex came out with the tablets, right? Um, is, is that ease of dosing and you're able to put it in quickly into the brew basket. Um, so on the upper right hand corner here is an example of some on brewer training materials that we developed for um, loop stores, so a C store chain out here in, in the West. And that's something that um, we certainly do um, for, for our customers. And also you as technicians, if you reach out to me, um, I have um, PowerPoint versions of training materials and that you can custom, you know, you can customize, you can drop your logo in and other ways that you could be then adding value. Um, all the, the red dots on this, this brewer show all the places that, that need to be cleaned, right? Wiping down the brewer itself, particularly now in a time of COVID, using disinfectants and things of that nature, the brew basket, descaling the machine, 
cleaning the servers, cleaning spigots, right? Okay. All right, so then often you are selling new pieces of equipment. You're selling air pot brewers, you're selling large, you know, twin one and a half gallon brewers, lots of espresso equipment. Something that I have always found is that bringing the necessary cleaners to the day of the install so that you're training at the point of installation is always going to be best. And I encourage you um, to, um, I think Caleb, did, didn't you used to have some type of kit you, you guys used to do? Oh yeah, well it was just a, you know, it's the startup kit, right? So, uh, you know, if you sell an espresso machine and, and there's no milk pitchers, uh, you know, how are you gonna make a cappuccino or a latte? Uh, same goes for cleaning. Um, so yeah, the kit was, uh, you know, some cleaning powder, Ernex, um, a, a knock box. We, we made our own knock boxes uh, uh, back in the day, which was also an interesting process. And um, like shot glasses or Demi Toss, uh, you know, whatever you think you need to be able to, you know, start up that machine and start making beverages and start the cleaning routine. And, you know, as well, do that, do that training right there in the moment when you have everybody's attention and a shiny new thing uh, that everybody's super interested in. That's so yeah, right. it's great to add that uh, to your, yeah. your startup kit. That's right. Yeah, to so the startup kit, but also too, this is additional revenue for you as, as technicians as well. Uh, and having, if you're doing a quarterly preventative maintenance program, you can certainly do the math, um, and I actually have some a spreadsheet as well that I, I'd be happy to share with you to help do an estimate of how, how many jars of, of espresso machine cleaner, how many tablets for their brewers, how much grinds would they need. And you could then include that in the cost of the preventative maintenance program, right? Um, and so in a way, making, as I mentioned, making it simple. Oftentimes, you know, I also find is, um, folks, you know, want to do the right thing, but, you know, sometimes run out of product. So good tips there. All right. So the cost of cleaning versus losing a valuable customer. I uh, took, took a little bit here and, and I did the math. If we were to, if, if a customer has an AirPod brewer and four AirPods, and this is at MSRP, right? This is at full, like, you know, if they're, if they're paying for tabs, um, the, the, coffee brewer cleaning tablets or cafes or what have you. They're playing like top MSRP. Um, the total cost per day and to clean it 365 days of, of the year is $190. And if, you know, if this is what you you do for, for a living and um, you make, a, you know, espresso uh, based beverages, it's only going to cost you $42 for the entire year to, to back flush that machine. So all told, if you add that all up and they're cleaning every day, they are super pro, $455. And then taking into account, okay, at the most it's gonna take 10 minutes to do all, all the things um, on, on the machine as well. So that would be um, the labor about $820. Okay, so we're taking into account that the cost of the cleaner and the cost of labor, okay. So say if you're only to lose one customer because you're just not keeping your eye on the ball, you're not, you're you just, the coffee tastes not great um, because you're not maintaining your equipment. And, you know, you've got some, an emergency, maybe one or two service calls because of lack of maintenance or lack of cleaning. Uh, you know, that loyal customer coming in five days a week uh, or five days a week spending 550, you're going to lose $1,400 or so. Um, and then you add to that the service call, that's that's nearly $2,000 out of your pocket, okay? Not great. Say you, you know, you're, you've upped your game, right? You've committed to doubling down and, and doing the right thing. If you um, then were to gain three more customers, fantastic. You're gonna get then another, you know, almost $4,300 worth of revenue if you then take out of that revenue, the cost of cleaning and the cost of, of the labor, you're still up $3,000. So I think this easily 
demonstrates the you know that it is in the consumer in the the operator's best interest to do so. Yeah, and Maria, you know, I'll add, I'll add one more thing there. Um, the the cost of downtime is really hard to understand. But you know, when you're when you're missing sales for a day because the machine's clogged up with copy, um, that's a huge impact, um, you know, to to the business. So it's hard to quantify uh, those numbers in in a lot of times, but it's it's also something to keep into consideration. Right. Yeah. You don't you don't want to give the uh, the consumer your your loyal customers an uh, an opportunity to go somewhere else, right? And then they're going to get out of the pattern of coming to see you, and then boom, they're gone. That right. little customer's gone. Um, all right, so let's let's get into a, a, a bit of chemistry. So so surfactants, what are those? Um, surfactants are, you know, the, the the components of the chemical cleaners that um, that are reducing the surface tension, um, so that the oils then can be washed away. So the hydrophilic head um, in the surfactant attracts the water molecules, whereas the tail loves that oil. So that brings the oils into, into solution so that then they can be, they can be rinsed away. All right, so something that I've found that a lot of techs don't um, have a lot of knowledge about also is milk system cleanings. Uh, we actually have um, uh, a couple different formulas of milk system cleaning, alkaline and acid formulas. So I'd like to go through those. Okay. So what is milk made up of? All right. It is uh, made up of fat, which makes it yummy, of course. Um, protein, right, to help us uh, energize ourselves, and then uh, calcium and magnesium, as they used to say, for for strong bones. So those are the minerals. Okay. So our alkaline formula breaks down the fat. It also breaks down protein, although the alkaline does not dissolve the minerals, okay? So that's something to be conscious of. So those could remain in the system or, or blocking uh, tubes or small orifices in, um, in super autos. So then milk system cleaners that, that have, are an acid formula those actually have surfactants that, that remove the milk fat. They've also got then the, the acid um, breaks down the proteins and it also dissolves the minerals. So, so I bring that up because um, so that, that would be all, all components would be cleaned with the acid with the surfactant. So therefore it's important, I'm bringing this up so that you're knowledgeable in the sense that if you're working mostly on traditional espresso equipment, my recommendation is an acid formula because what's happening in that, that steam wand is you're getting mineral content that could be clogging then the tip of the steam wand or what have you. Then with um, fully automatic um, traditionals, um, mostly we're, use, we're seeing um, alkaline formulas. Some, op, some uh, equipment manufacturers um, have an alternation between the two, but that's why it's very important to, to query your equipment manufacturer of what is their recommendation. They do a great deal of testing on their systems, the, the, uh, the small tubes and orifices to, to make sure you're doing the right thing, okay? Um, then additionally, with, es with espresso equipment, you want to make sure that you're using, you know, the right formula, um, the shape and size tablet. This is just a, a small assortment of, of the different sizes and shapes and, and, and weights uh, that we have in, in the formula. So that is why your espresso machine manufacturers are developing tablets that go with their equipment you know, because the, the different brew cycles and cleaning cycles are, are designed as such. So it's important to, to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about grinder maintenance. Um, on the right-hand side, somebody says, can I, use, can I just use rice to cl clean the grinder, to clean those oils out of the grinder? Um, it's actually better served to, to not do anything to clean your grinder if you're gonna use rice. Those starches that are in, in rice are more apt to um, to clog up uh, the grinder as well. 
Um, we've got a couple different formulation, two different formulations of grinds. Um, the original formula has been around for um, my 12 or 13 years now. All it is is um, it's cereals and pharmaceutical grade binders, right? That that get the um, the oils and the sediment um, or the fines then out of the burr set. And we've done uh, a great deal of testing uh, with uh, we had developed them with Mel Koenig many many years ago that it actually that um, reduce in um, friction in the burrs that extends the life of the burrs. So that's that's a nice thing there. Additionally, you're not having baristas that maybe are going to cross thread the uh, what the um, the um, burrs when they put them back together. That can be a, um, a service call in and of itself. The original yellow uh, grinds formula is not good for super automatics um, because it's it likes it likes moisture. They'll fo they'll uh, swell up and clog up. So we developed actually a, a product called Super Grinds, and that is um, is a formula that is is great for super automatics, but then also can be used um, back with conventionals as well. Um, the other thing is cleaning the coffee oils out of those hoppers as well. Um, we've got the the wipes um, and then also that uh, the cafe spray stuff I was talking about. Uh, okay, let's, you know, also, this is a great slide to talk to your customers about first and foremost, filtering their equipment properly or taking care of, of hardness in the water because these are all the areas for you to, um, to discuss with your customer the, the things that can go wrong if, if there is scale buildup. Um, the inlet valve could, or the water outlet um, uh, could um, be clogged. Your heating element um, can be coated in, in lime scale. And that, of course, um, causes the, the element to, to work harder, causing it to foil, uh, to fail faster. Also, you, you know, the temperature sensor can be coated as well not um, communicating properly with um, with the, the brain. And so these are all, all ways to explain to customers of, of why um, they're wanting to filter properly to begin with. But then of course, if it does build up with scale, um, you know, you wanna make sure that you're using safe chemicals um, and they're being disposed of properly. Um, our, professional grade descaler is is a, um, very safe for um, for then rinsing out of the piece of equipment it is a citric and sulfamic based formulation but but be very very careful um, to use proper ventilation um, with with the professional grade stuff and um, and wearing gloves and things of that nature all right so finally I just wanted to touch on um, cold brew and iced tea um, equipment. The thing there is, so many operators and, and also technicians aren't aren't haven't seen this as an area to um, pick up additional business. Is when you're brewing at an ambient temperature, the possibility of bacterial growth in the the, the brewing chamber or in the keg or the lines is definitely there. Um, so you're going to want to clean. The, um, the lines and then sanitization with, with a, um, an EPA registered sanitizer is your, is your top quality way to attack that. And I have a lot of techs who are now doing this service for their customers. Um, so that would be a two-step process. There are other products on the market that would be a one-step process, which is a cleaner with sanitizing properties. Um, but um, so that would be a way that, that an operator can do so in, in a one-step process. But certainly what, you know, as a way for you to additionally add value is when you're at, at the account to ask them how, how they're, how they're um, cleaning and sanitizing those lines. So I also encourage you to, to act when you see something that is, is amiss. If, if you see a, a piece of equipment that is, is not clean, stop and show the folks how it's done, right? You, you could have something soaking while you're um, performing the service call, you're then adding value to that account. You know, and, um, and going back to, to the, um, the point of losing those customers, I think that if you're not 
carrying cleaners on your truck to sell to to um to your customers you're leaving money on the table this is a certainly it's a, a revenue opportunity that is um also helping your account in a sense of, of not having their equipment go down the uh, picture on the right is actually bacterial growth in a super automatic That's what hey maria i have a question yeah so you're a tech in the field and you come in to a store and it's it's nasty like the picture on the le on the left how do you how do you yeah. what do you recommend to a tech in terms of communicating to it without without damaging the relationship and we all we've all run into this it's like you go in and it's like how do you train your tech to avoid the hey your machine looks like crap and how do you yeah. what what do you recommend in terms of showing your tech that this is what you need to do to explain to the customer that their equipment's dirty and how to yeah. how to really save the relationship sure 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 um one thing um that that i found is is um successful is to just simply start cleaning it and um and then oftentimes you know the folks will be like oh oh what's that product what what's that what's that that you're using and then it it's a it turns it around as a conversation starter so if if they're if the operator it, you know may not have the right types of cleaners you know maybe they're just trying to use soap and water um to to clean you know the um the port of filter or what have you and, and another tactic is um is to also just ask them hey you know what one of the things that i always am you know curious about is how are you maintaining your equipment to ask them how they are doing it at that point and um and then that creates more of an opportunity for for a conversation okay thank you and the other the other thing too and let me add this last thing is that sometimes what i would do is uh encourage you know and i've seen some techs do this this is crafty as well is you're going to clean is you're going to clean the machine you're going to clean the server or what have you you're going to do your tech your call you're going to calibrate or you're going to say to the barista you know okay let's let's calibrate this brewer again but keep some of the coffee that's from the dirty server have them taste the coffee from the dirty server or the dirty porta filter and then have them taste um uh from the one that's clean and ask them which one they prefer and that you know that will be the situation where the light bulb will go off for them you won't have to say hey this is nasty you know wh why the heck aren't you doing this don't you care about your business it's more so of like an aha moment for them like wow that does taste better which would i rather pay you know three dollars for so that's another another way to approach it um additionally uh, some training resources as well and as i um, mentioned earlier um certainly reach out to myself or Highland um, for, for this deck, but also if I can uh, support, be of support with any training materials, I'm happy to help. So questions there? Yeah, you know, I, I always would just start that cleaning and, you know, show and tell goes a long way, like you were saying, just, um, I don't think that folks often realize what it looks like inside of there, especially, you know, when, when really, you're trying to connect with your customers and 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 um you know it's it's this space where you're having conversations and yeah you want to deliver high quality product but sometimes it's just not known uh to the folks that there's something they they need to do there so hey check this out the screen or the inside of this um server and then show them the before and after it's always a, the aha moment <laughs> you know like wow that's that's supposed to be shiny and steel. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can, I can right. dig that. <laughs> yeah, and, and this 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 slide here showing you know drop in the screens right to to soak the screen. Oftentimes you're going to go into an, an account and they've never they've never dropped the screen right. So you know showing the barista how to do so safely so they don't you lose the you know the screw to put it in a demi toss cup, put it right back up here, don't lose it. Um, so that certainly goes a long way because you're showing your the val that you don't want them to call you for cleaning, you know, their equipment. You you want them to to you know have you coming out as preventative maintenance. Um, you know, those break and fix calls are not as fun as as PM calls, right? Yeah. So I've I've got a couple of like tech questions, and um, you know, I'm not sure if. Uh, 
if you know, maybe you, you know the answers to these or not, but um, you know, as technicians, we will like often have a bucket of, of cleaner, you know, with a brush net or something next to what we're doing in, in a shop environment or even in a cafe, it just depends yeah. on what we're dealing with. Um, and you mentioned the heat is important yeah. and you know, we know that definitely make has an effect, but is there a range that the product, you know, is ideal or is it just the hotter, the better? It's it's the hotter the better. It's just it's gonna it's gonna work faster. It's it'll work okay. faster. So um, I would say, you know, above 180, right? Sure. Um, but it, but again, then if you can be drawing, you know, say you have in in the shop, if you can then uh, draw water off of a you know five gallon hot water tower to make that solution, it's just all the better. It's just to save you time, and particularly on on service calls, time is money um and so um yeah you know um and that's yeah. why frequent cleaning i i you know as i mentioned you know oftentimes the operator is thinking oh i'm gonna you know just clean once a month you know i want to save the save the money on the cleaner as i showed it it's it's not very expensive but the thing that they're not thinking about at that point is the labor involved the delayed cleaning then requires their baristas to you know spend quite a bit of extra time putting the brew basket in a solution taking the the um, cage out of the brew basket getting in there and scrubbing um and um let's face it we're in an era where folks are using um packets to go in their you know in their dishwasher at home packets to go in their washing machine you know why shouldn't it be just as easy at work right that there's a tablet right and it's just like easy so yeah, absolutely. So uh, to kind of expand on that uh, first question, is is there like amount of sort of powder to water soluble rate? Like you, you had mentioned like, you know, uh, up the dose to get it a little stronger. Is there, is there um, um, you know, ounce to uh, water volume that it's just not going to accept anymore? Like no reason to throw more in there because you're just wasting right. money. Right, right, right. Yeah, actually, that that remind that brings something up. So, um, okay, so a small tablet. Let me get down in the picture. A small. This is our small tabs. Um, this is a four gram. This is dosed for about a half um, a half a gallon. Um, and then the good old fashioned Urn and Brewer packet. This is dosed for a gallon and a half. We brought out into the marketplace. To, I have it somewhere here in my bag of tricks. Oh, here it is. Um, a gallon and a half size tablet. So because I went into accounts, this one's three times the size. I went into an account and they were, you know, on a gallon and a half brewer, they were using one tabs. So that's only a third of the cleaning solution. Um, really, you know, the, the um, strength of the solution required. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's about a, a, um, three quarters of an ounce to an ounce of our Urn and Brewer cleaner to a gallon and a half. And then it's about four grams of our tablet formula to um, to half gallon. Okay. Then for then for um, for solution for a espresso, um, six grams to a liter uh, would be would, would be the proper dose um, to make a solution. Um, then actually I was thinking through of um, espresso machine cleaning. Um, there are tablet formulas as well um, that mm. you may want to um, have folks think about. Because think about if, if you're using a tablet formula milk system cleaner, you're not shipping water. So you're saving, saving money on, on shipping. And, um, and actually the formula is 50% less expensive as well. Um. So in, in my experience, the tablets make it a lot easier on the consumer, but they don't seem to dissolve as fast as the powder does. Is it a little longer of a cleaning with a tablet than a powder? I wouldn't, like I wouldn't, you... say, I wouldn't say it's yeah. a longer um, cleaning. Our original formula of, uh, of the tabs did take a little bit longer and that's why I, I recommend it recommend you know into the brew basket so you got that the turbulence of the water flowing past the the tablet um and then once it's in solution it's it's working just as fast 
We have a, a newer formula, which is our zeaxanthin zebra formula. That's a phosphate-free and faster dissolving. And um, so uh, if, if folks that haven't um, used that formula, the Z formula, um, that's something to take a look at. So it's got the two, two benefits. It's fast dissolving. Um, and then also there's the lack of phosphates, which are um, not as friendly to the water table. So that's something that folks could consider. Right. Could, what else do you know about the, uh, the phosphate part? Because there, are there some implications around um, how it interacts with uh, like different um, materials? Is, it, was that part of it or was it really a sustainability yeah. effort? There was two, yeah, two, it's twofold. It's twofold. Okay. It, it's a, from a sustainability perspective and um, an environmental perspective. But we have um, worked with some of our manufacturers on, on materials compatibility. And there are certain pieces of equipment with, um, with parts that um, caused our, uh, our, our team to, to go with that phosphate free formula. That's a good question. Great. Okay. Um, I didn't, I haven't been seeing the chat. So uh, Highland just sent me a note uh, and, and said to make sure and get to the questions. Uh, we do still have 20 minutes. So we're in good time. And I got to have my personal conversation with you. So thanks, thanks to everybody for allowing me to do that. Um, and now I'm going to go to uh, the chat here. Let me see. Sorry, I would generally have reviewed these a little bit closer uh, before. Let's see from uh, Spencer Perez. Uh, does Ernex have ready-made solutions for ultrasonic cleaning descaling? If not, would you recommend an Ernex product as a component in a U.S. solution? Additionally, is protein coagulation something we should be considering during cleaning? And Maria, I can I can repeat those. Uh, that was that was a lot of questions. That was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the ultrasonic, um, I've seen those those big tanks. Um, certainly, um, we have. Um, if, if you want to have it go fast, you know, move faster, um, getting the solution hotter, like a, you know, hotter um, acid, um, we'll certainly ha have it move uh, quicker. So that Descal Pro would would be certainly something you could consider. That's a good question. Um, and then the second question was. Uh, would you, so if not, would you recommend an Ernex product as a component in a U.S. solution? I'm going to need to look into what that, what he means by a U.S. solution. Oh, ultrasonic. Okay. Yeah, oh. Oh, ultrasonic. So, yeah. Woo, look at that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we would have reviewed these a few before. <laughs> right, right. Thanks yes. for working so, through that, Maria. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, the Des Cal Pro would, would, you know, is something that is citric with, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, of then the sulfamic is, is to make it hotter. Is... Then additionally, is protein coagulation something we should, uh, we should be considering during cleaning? That would be the, around. It would the thing that is is mostly of concern in those super autos is, is the fat um and and a little bit of the protein that that's mostly something of concern in a super automatic i'm not as concerned in um the conventionals okay. um you did bring up recently though when the milk gets sucked up into the into those boilers right yeah, that that came up on one of our last ex ask the experts. Um, you know, how we what best practices for dealing with it because ultimately the milk sort of bakes in. Yeah. Um, some sometimes it, sometimes you can get it out, and sometimes you can't. It just depends on how long it's been cooking in there. Yeah, I you know I would think that you could use a strong solution of a milk cleaner. Um, for, um the acid-based um, milk system cleaner, um, I would use um, four ounces per gallon, and that mm -hmm. could help to then kill that bacteria. Yeah, um, if anybody wants to know, I can go into great detail, but we, we did have, well, one of my aha moments as a tech was when we found we could use that milk cleaner to get the smell out of a boiler uh, without really having to disassemble it. It was, a matter of just pouring some in the top, letting it sit, and then flushing it through, 
kind of heating it up, cooling it down. And, you know, again, if it's not coming out, it's not coming out, but this was a really great, simple time-saving solution in those, those cases. Um, hey, Caleb, so, on, on the muff yeah. boiler thing, do you leave it in yeah. there for a specified amount of time? Do you let it soak for a while? Or do you, do you let it run it through? And, and that's, by the way, that's a genius idea. That's the, a great aha uh -huh moment. But and oh, I hope seriously, you dude, even do it in the field sometimes. I've, I've actually got a boiler right now that has it. But how long do you set, let it sit in there for? Um, well, so I would, you know, it, it was kind of like plated by ear, but, you know, it, and it depends on how stinky it is. So, yeah. um, you know, uh, we would we would take uh, one of the fittings off the top, pour, pour it in through there, you know, heat the boiler up, cool it down, overfill it like through the steam wands. Take the, take the tips off, just let it flow out into the drain or into buckets, um, and then rinse it really good. And then, you know, does it still stink? Uh, does it, does, if you steam, you know, milk or water, does it smell like that? Does it smell like burned milk anymore? And if it doesn't, then you were successful. And if it does, then, you know, you might need to replace the boiler. <laughs> uh, but it, it, I don't know, Highland, that we had a, a, a like recipe for it. We were just, and, and I think it, and it was different based on, on the situation but it cool. was it was successful many times so um it, it became part of our repertoire when it happened that's 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 a genius fix man thank you so much yeah we're we're currently doing some some uh development on a piece of equipment that um we've then recognized the u and i actually correct myself in the it's our alkaline formula um and then in a solution it's a um, several ounces for a contact time of 15 minutes um so if anybody you know um would like more information on on the proportion um send me an email I believe it was to either two or four ounces per gallon oh, okay so i want to try and get to everybody's questions here um let's see so uh christina jackson oh so Kafiza powder alone in the basket isn't the best. Um, sorry, you kind of talked about how putting the tablet in there allows the water to build up a bed depth and uh, yeah. gives you more surface area for, for cleaning. Sure. sure. You know, using using a filter <clears throat> in your brew basket yes. and then, you know, they I think years ago, Puro's directions was at, you know, a teaspoon of Puro in the brew basket um, or Kafiza, right? Um, so I would put a filter. Sure, you can certainly use um, use the um, Kafiza, you know, in the filter because that'll slow it down. But the thing to be conscious of is that that really foamy nature uh, of espresso machine detergents is going to re require quite a bit of rinsing. So you're going to really have to rinse the brew basket. You're going to really need to rinse two or three times that server to get that viscous detergent out of the server, or you're gonna have yeah. um, some residual flavor. Whereas the urn and brewer cleaner formulation it does not foam, and you could probably get away with just rinsing once, right? A quick rinse under the yeah. sink for the brew basket and then rinsing the, the server just once. Um, you, you can get away with that. Um, so it's just, it's a, it's a kind of a time, a time thing. Um, yeah, uh, and I'll add, uh, you were mentioning tip, uh, tips and tricks to help your customer make cleaning easy. One of the things that I came across a while back is a, a customer that has multiple servers yeah. uh, for brewed coffee. It, it's really kind of a pain to do all of them at the same time. So I encourage them to write in Sharpie on the back, like Monday or M T T, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday. So they just had to do one server a day. Or you know, two depending on how many there are, and then put it on rotation, and you constantly have clean servers that are getting clean once a week. Um, uh, the other, the other, the other thing as well is is the urn cleaners are blue, and so it yeah. visually it visually indicates that there's cleaner in the server. So if, if you know if it's left inside, then another thing is that if, um, for example, you know many of you are, are servicing hotels. And they might have a massive urn, um, and then they can reuse that solution in the the pots that they're taking to the table in a in a banqueting situation, you know. Or if they're cleaning a big urn, and then they've got the 
beautiful, um, hopefully not with a, you know, a burner at the bottom, but, a, you know, the big silver, you know, um, service that they're taking to the breakout rooms, they can reuse that solution for, for those servers as well. That's a great tip. All right, let's see here. Will Hinton, um, we're, Will here watching from UK. Is it true that all cleaners are more effective when used with low mineral water? Interesting. I never considered that. Uh, the the mineral content that but I'm not quite uh, I'm not quite certain. I'll, I'll be I'll honest to, on that one. That's going to be a takeaway for Maria. Find yeah, out. Yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to come back and I'll, I'll when we when we post this to YouTube, I'll put the answer. Yeah, and, and that'll be another another good reason to have good uh, filtered water, right? Because yeah. uh, <laughs> you can't get your coffee equipment as clean. Yeah. Uh, maybe. We, we don't know that yet, but Maria's going to let us know. Okay, um, from Kevin uh, Carlson, I find more and more of my customers adding additional products alongside their cold brew and nitro coffee, products such as dairy-based and kombucha. Uh, we recommend uh, the, our new one to two cold brew cleaner and sanitizer to clean their equipment for cold brew and nitro dispense equipment. Will it be effective for dairy and kombucha? Yes, absolutely. Yep, I've got uh, I've got several of our um, of our um, partners are using either one. We we originally called it one two cold brew. So the first step was the cleaning with our uh, liquid product called Clearly Cold, and then second and rinsing, and then secondarily sanitizing with the EPA registered sanitizer, which is Complete Cafe. So as I said, that is like primo top top of the uh, you know quality scale way to do it um, and that is perfect for then um, a, a draft latte or a kombucha um, the one pro is effective but um, but I would say you're you're best served to do the two-step process particularly if it's if it's a milk based situation um, you don't want to have um, any concerns of a foodborne illness in those lines Okay, next question. I'm gonna keep, we're gonna keep moving through them because we've only got about eight minutes left, Maria. So sure, 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 let's do it. If, if we can get to everybody's questions live, that would be uh, ideal. So um, next question is from Alex De Silva. Uh, Grinds, any tips to persuade the customer to use more frequently? Uh, wow. Um, are you showing them how to use it? I, I think that a lot of lot of operators have never even seen it before, yeah. um, and and so um, you know as a technician, if you were to bring a jar with you um, and show them how easy it is and how much oil is actually you know coming out of the uh, the the grinder, right? They they'll maybe think that there's there's no there are no fines in their burr set and then you use it once and, and then they see how much is then left in that burr set. Um, then additionally, I've, I've done the math um, to show the customer, okay, you know, it, it, if they can avoid a service call, it pays for, pays for the grinds. So that's an, another way as well. You could also give them a sample. Um, uh, I, I I think you used to, you know, leave them with little baggies uh, of the product. Um, we also have um, uh, sample size um, uh, packets of of the um, grinds that, if if technicians, you know, want to um, to provide those for their customers, they can do so as well. Yeah, and I would add, you know, show them the, when you take it apart, show them the inside, and um, and then show them after you clean it. And say, look, you, you know, you don't really have to. If if you do this regularly, you know, taking all of this apart um, to get in there isn't going to be as necessary. Um, That's right. I also feel like it, you need to start with a clean grinder, um, in in my opinion. There, so you know, it's a great space. Then I'm working on a grinder. I've cleaned it. I've showed you how dirty it was in there. Now I've cleaned it. Now here's a way for you to do it that doesn't involve cross threading, taking you know, pulling tools out. Um, you know, having to get in there and then work, you know, if, if it's espresso grinder, how hard is, is it for some people to get that grind adjusted back um, to that setting again? So that, that would be. You know, 
The, the other thing to think about as well is, is to use grinds on the grinder that you're then going to do the PM and then open it up and show them then how much, you know, cause they haven't cleaned it ever. They've never cleaned it. Um, and show them how, how much, um, oil is still in there. That's another, another tip. This might be a really good question for you. Cause I'm not sure you probably see this more than I did, but, um, this comes from Helena Odrovic. Um, I have a question. I, I live in a country where espresso companies just sell espresso to their customers, uh, namely cafes, um, usually with equipment, uh, grinders, and they offer to teach, um, but they don't offer to teach their cafes how to clean. So they just sell them stuff and don't really like go that extra mile, except for with the specialty coffee, which is a smaller component there. Um, so although very dark roast is worse for equipment, white roast, uh, Duncan specialty coffee. So my question is, um, how big is it a problem here in the US? Uh, I guess to kind of summarize, um, you know, there's there's companies that just ship coffee and then there's yeah. companies that are like full service and they, they come with yeah. the, the, you know, training and, and ongoing, you know, support. Uh, so, you know, probably think of like maybe hotel situation. Sure. I don't know, Maria, yeah. maybe you have yeah. a better. Yeah, so, it, so in that sense, that is a perfect opportunity for you as a technician to be adding value, right? Is then, you know, they've never been trained to, to how to do any of this. And you're then showing your professionalism and also the, the reason they want to be calling your company as, as their tech vendor is you're engaged to help them be better operators. And, you know, there's, there's nothing better than um, what we call the earn next challenge, like, right, you know, having a shot of espresso off of a clean machine and one off of a dirty machine, and you will certainly um, have quite a few converted um, clients. Set the standard, right? Um, yeah. So next question, I've heard uh, not to use grind calf coffee grinders uh i think that's just a myth uh, so that's Brittany, right. uh leslie yeah it it should work with any coffee light dark decaf yeah. I, flavored coffees uh you know that may be a different question like does it get the flavor out of a it's grind? it's actually pretty darn good at, at purging the flavor i have i have a cus a few customers who buy you know we have it in, in pails they they uh yeah. um Really, really I still recommend good. it. Just keep a flavored grinder and a regular grinder, so you don't have to deal with it. But you know, yeah. it should still clean the grinder. It might I not get love, off. <laughs> I will love me my macadamia van vanilla macadamia nut. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Every bit is at home. <laughs> uh, so Chad Rich, I had a fellow tech suggest getting. It says sulfamic acid. It might mean sulfuric, but I I'm not really familiar with all the different acids so yeah um, sulfamic sulfamic is certainly a, de a decent descaler oh, but as i was mentioning there be be cautious of the of the yes you know how strong that solution is okay um, so we've only got a couple minutes left and i apologize to the folks that i i missed about four questions here but we will um respond uh to these questions uh highland you want to jump in how do we get back to these folks do we have a way to communicate to them after or yeah so what what we'll do is we'll actually um the sca moderated panel uh, the sca will send us a list of the questions and the questions okay. um, normally come with their emails um maria some of these questions i actually think we should answer um online through facebook and slack they're really good questions okay. um and um Caleb, I am going to give you. Um, I'm going I'm to put your milk thing up on Facebook as soon as I figure out how to do it. But yeah, yeah we'll, sure. we'll get. What we do is they'll send us. Uh, Richard will send us the questions, and then I'll send them over to you, or I'll send them to the team like we've been doing, and then answer what you can, and then we'll decide what to put on social media. Yeah, and then I mean the other thing is as well as this may be posted later on on YouTube, we could we could put those questions and answers in a in a long format on YouTube as well. We will post the, your deck and we will post the video on YouTube. Awesome. Yeah. So I, you know, 
Thanks, Maria, so much. This has been really informative. And um, uh, I, oh, look, here comes the fam. Um, really informative uh, uh, talk. Uh, really enjoyed it. I hope everybody else um, got as much out of it as I did. And keep an eye out on Slack for the Pro Series, as well as um, future Ask the Experts. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys next Friday. Thanks, everybody. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Island, do you close out the meeting? I I don't think I. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be Richard Stiller, but I I'm oh, okay. a, I'm a, 